Any yeah. questions? This is coming from Reicher735, and he just wants to know from a pro, how safe are hel Robinson helicopter pilots, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Robinson helicopters in your opinion? Great question. This comes up all the time, and I talk about it frequently. We have a video that I just did within the last few weeks called, you know, Robinson helicopters, love them or hate them, right? And, and here's, here's this is, I'm going to give you my observation, right? Because somebody said, oh, that's not a good title, love them or hate them. It's just a fact of this or that. And it was just a title to get people talking, right? Because what I see, in my opinion, either people love the Robinson and they just absolutely love them, or you make a post about a Robinson and then people will jump in and they're like 100% the other side. They're just like, oh, the damn Robinson, you know? And so it's like, there really seems like they're on both ends of the spectrum, right? People love them that fly them and have a lot of time in them. And usually the people that are bashing them don't, they don't usually have a lot of time in them. And I only say that because our examiner made a statement about, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, I thought it made a lot of sense. He said, the people that talk super negative of a Robinson, most of the time will have 10 hours or less, or they've never even flown one. They, they just, either they haven't been in it and they're going off what they heard, or they got just a little bit of time in it and immediately decided they hated it. With me, when I first climbed in them, I hated the side click, I thought it sucked. However, my instructor says, hey, it's still a helicopter. The inputs are still the same, don't worry about it. And then over time, I learned to like the Robinson. With my experience, I went to the Robinson safety course early in my career, after I got my private, this would have been like 99 or something. It was the late 90s. I went to the Robinson factory and the Robinson factory is very open and honest. And they say, look, in the beginning, one in 10 helicopters that left the factory, I think was the number, one in 10 that leave the factory didn't make it to their location, right? Their destination. That sounds pretty scary and that sounds pretty bad, right? So they say in the beginning, in the very beginning, here's what was wrong with the aircraft. Here's where we went wrong as a helicopter manufacturer. And then they also talk about, you know, like we now have the SFAR in place, right? To really hone in certain things uh, that a person needs to be aware of before they start flying a helicopter, like low G. Well, it pertains to any helicopter out there, but just in the Robinson, they're more susceptible to a low G event if you go forward. But with the proper training, they can be safe. So Robinson will show you where they were in the beginning and where they are today. And, and I can't remember the numbers to tell you, but we're talking a scale from not very safe in the beginning to the safety being increased, you know, by hundreds of times over the years because they took what they learned, they fixed the problems with the aircraft, continue to do those types of maneuvers. And then the SBAR 73 training that we all, we all say is a pain in the ass. We do, right? However, with that being said, that SFAR 73 training is good training and it's good for anything that you fly. So if you start in the Robinson and you go through the SFAR training, it's actually hol holding you to a higher standard in my opinion. It's all the things that you need to know anyway as a private or, or getting into helicopters, there's a certain amount of things you need to know, right? With the SBAR 73, they're just honing it in harder, low RPM, low G, all these bad things that can happen virtually in any helicopter, you just get them, they're, they're honed in more, they're brought to the forefront. SBAR 73, although we all like to complain about being a pain in the ass, it's actually a good thing and I'm sure that it say, has saved lives. And I can tell you, Robinson, hands down, has the best training on the planet. I've flown Instroms, I've flown Schweitzers, I've flown Cabris, I've flown Robinsons, all the trainers, Robinson has the best training, the best factory school. From what I can tell, I haven't even been offered any other factory schools, but the factory school, their flight syllabus training that they put out, from what I've seen over the years, Robinson hands down has the best training. So do I think they're safe? That was the question. Yeah, I think so. I'm operating an R22 and I'm operating an R44. With that being said, do I stick to what we all learn as a private pilot? Yes. Doing what these helicopters are built for, flying them the way they're intended to being flown, and doing the maintenance on them. This is another one that, sure, when you take Robinson, the, mo the most popular civil training helicopter in the world, 
more helicopters in a Robus than anything, of course you're going to have more accidents just in terms of the amount of numbers. I'm telling you, they've increased over the years the safety margin. So maintenance is sometimes a maintenance problem could be the reason something happened and maybe you didn't hear that that's the reason or you didn't investigate. Maintenance can be cheated on any helicopter. It doesn't matter whether it's a Robinson, it doesn't matter whether it's an Instrum. How scrupulous, the people that are doing the maintenance, the flight school owners, you've got people that spend the money and have immaculate helicopters, well taken care of, where the maintenance is 100%. But you got a lot of shady operators out there too that because they're not making a lot of money, flight schools in general, it's hard to make money for flight school. It's just the way it is. So a flight school will buy a couple helicopters or at least a couple helicopters. They start taking money in on account, helicopter breaks. So a little bit of that money that was supposed to go here has to go to there. Then pretty soon you're falling behind on payments. And I've been there, done that. I did that with the instrument I owned 15 years ago. Super, super hard. So a lot of times because schools aren't generating the kind of money that they need to to properly do the, uh, pay the bills and keep on top of the maintenance, Sometimes maintenance starts to slide a little bit. I often bring up the interview with Tim Tucker from Robinson Helicopter. Many people know who Tim is if you've been around Robinson for years. And we asked him at Heli Expo, we said, hey, wh which helicopter should somebody fly when they start their training? Which helicopter is best or start their training? And he's standing right in front of Robinson as we're doing the video. And he said, Kenny, I don't think it makes a difference which helicopter you fly. He said, I think the Robinson, the Enstrom, the Cabri, the Schweitzer, all great helicopters if they're maintained, the proper maintenance is done, and you have a, a reputable flight school with reputable instructors who are doing the job right, I think hands down is more important than the make and model of the aircraft. So I think, my opinion, yeah, they're safe. I fly them, I take my daughter and my friends and family up in them, and if I didn't think they were safe, I wouldn't fly them. On the other spectrum of that, I don't go out and do macho, cowboy, stupid shit. I don't go out and do things that the helicopter wasn't designed to do. I like to go out there and follow the rules, fly very conservative, fly slow, smooth and methodical. And I think if you do the proper maintenance on a Robinson and you fly it the way it's intended to be flown and you get the proper training from a qualified Robinson instructor, I think that you will, chances are you're going to be just fine. And our clone is located at askhogs.com. You can go below and click on the link to go check it out. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can ask training related questions, flight and ground. 14 years of my contents loaded in this thing. Blogs, podcasts, videos, paid content, free content. There's over 6 million words piped into my clone. It's amazing. Go down below, askhogs.com. The clone is free to everyone. And the clone is also inside of our hog site on every video, every page. So you can be in viewing videos and you can always ask the clone a question while you're at it. So you can get an immediate answer. First right here is free, free PDF, private pilot 101 helicopter training blueprint. That's why we created this. And let me cover what's in the first chapter. Since you ask and you're at the beginning, that's why we created this. The first chapter are questions that we've we took like the top 10 questions that we get all the time, like is learning how to fly a helicopter difficult? How long will it take to become a private pilot? How much will it cost to become a private pilot? What is the best approach to selecting a flight school? What are the key differences between helicopters and fixed wing aircraft? How many tests will I have to take? How many hours for solo on the license? Kenny's recommended training supplies. So this is absolutely 100% free. You can go down below there's a link down below, or you can type in your browser, privateblueprint.com, and you can download immediately after you sign up. You'll sign up, enter your name and email, and the next page will show you download your book here. That's where you should start, because again, it's free. Or subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel, and you'll get a notification when the new video comes out for either the live or the premiere, whichever way we do it. And then we want to also bring up we are updating and starting to update our R22 specific course behind us. Of course, behind us. Course using the helicopter behind us. Lindsay's in charge of getting in there and updating some images in the R22 site uh, section of hogs. 
We have R22 specific section and an R44 specific section that come with any of our memberships. So you don't have to buy that specifically. We use Private Pilot, for example, monthly membership. It has both the R22 and R44 sections in there. And since we have an R22 available for, to us and an R44 available to us, we thought, why not get the content updated in those courses with some fresh videos, fresh images. And also want to mention, hogspaysme.com. This is passive income. You want to earn some money, particularly if you're a flight instructor. Anybody can use the Hogs affiliate link. You go to hogspayme.com. That link is down below. You'll sign up for it. It'll give you access to a dashboard inside that you'll see your link and a link to share with others. So when they sign up, you receive 50% off our online memberships. Private pilot, commercial pilot, instrument pilot, certified flight instructor and or private or professional pilot, that's 2,800 bucks. If you share your link with one of your students and they buy ProPilot, it's a lifetime membership for all courses, you will get $1,400 shipped to your PayPal account after the 30 days. We got two aircraft and a lot of people going, well, I want to, well, I'm gonna, well, that's when everybody's gonna start wanting those times. So to speed the process along, we need to get some workbook for these helicopters. Both of them are sitting currently not flying and they're both ready to go. So reach out to Hogs Member Support, 574-767-1797 if you'd like to get on the schedule for some training. We specialize in check rides, finish the people up, but we can also do you know, SFAR checkouts, Again, you can come in for one day, two days, whatever you need, or you need a block of time. We'd even be willing to work you a little deal this time of the year to get some time on these aircraft. So again, reach out to Hawk Member Support, 574-767-1797. When you feel the pressure to fly, but know the right decision is to stay on the ground, hit the hogs, no go, and live to fly another day. Helicopter Ground dot com.